We're back. Star Talk Sports Edition. We're talking about the Olympics, a series of these programs where we're just trying to figure out what's going on, how does it work, and all the ways that science might be informing it. So, so Gary, who do you have for this segment? Um, we have the most wonderfully interesting athlete, Paralympian, Matt Stutzman, uh, won silver in the London Olympics in 2012. Um, Guinness World Record holder for the most accurate arrow shot at a target over distance by any individual. 310 yards. That's three football fields all in a line <laughs> and, and then, then some. some, right? Now, <laughs> okay. Team Gold in the Para Panolympic Games and an individual silver in the Para Paralympic Games. Hey, Matt, welcome welcome to Star Talk, dude. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so if I'm going on a hunting trip, I'm taking you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. down. I'm down. Do you ever hunt? Do you do you go bear hunting with a bow? Uh, you know what? I haven't. <laughs> I haven't bear hunted yet because I feel like um, if I don't do good, he will chase me down and try to get my arms off or something <laughs> like that. I, I can't. I can't afford to lose any more appendages. Yeah, yeah no I, more limbs. <laughs> limbs for you. Uh, let me. Could you just explain um, how? Forgive my naivete here, but how do the Paralympics work? I presume each sport has its own rules about what needs to be your circumstances in order to participate. So uh, in the case of the Paralympics archery, how what are the rules about that? Uh, so the division that I'm in um, is basically they're looking at uh, the least amount of disability possible. So pretty much everybody in my group of, let's say a hundred, all of them have, most of their disabilities are from the waist down. Whether they're paralyzed and have to be in a wheelchair or they lost a leg and they have to stand on a prosthetic. Um, there's different categories, but that's the most competitive category. And that's where I wanna be because I just wanna be the best. Damn. Yeah, well, I mean, really, you're just showing off. <laughs> that's what he's doing. That's what he's I doing mean, there. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, you there's a guy it. who's just like, yeah, I have a prosthetic leg and, you know, I can hit a target from 100 yards. And you're like, uh, bro, I don't have arms. <laughs> I don't have arms and I, I hit a target. And I can do that from three and I can do it from three times the distance. <laughs> so fight that. How yeah, about he he wins up? every argument there ever was. Yeah, there's no argument to have, man. H uh, hands down, you know. <laughs> right. If you say so yourself. Uh -huh. Matt, I, I, uh, let's row back a little bit here. Um, this Guinness Book of Records, which you own outright, um, someone was saying to me that when you attempted this, because of the crosswinds, you had to aim at an air conditioning unit on a building in a completely different place to hit the target. What is so going that the on? Air, so, that the, so that the air would move it onto the target and you have Correct. to know that in advance. Yeah. Is that what happened there? Yeah. So the rules state you have to use a 60 pound bow and you only get three attempts, at, you know, ever to make it. You have to wait, call wait, just shooter. wait for the non archers. When you say 60 pounds, that's the force necessary to pull to, the string. Correct. To okay. draw back. The Not bow, that yes. the bow weighs 60 pounds. Just to be clear. Correct. Okay, good. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. That is the, the Cause, kinetic cause energy that pushes the arrow forward is 60 mm -hmm. pounds. Yeah, if it weighed 60 pounds, you'd be Hercules. <laughs> 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 I would definitely need bigger arm muscles for that one. But yeah. so, yeah, so to figure out how to shoot that far away, when you do the math, you have to aim at a certain angle, uh, you know, like whether it's like 32 degrees or whatever that is, and you have to calculate the arrow speed. And, you, and so for me, it just so happened that where I needed to aim to calculate all this to actually hit the bullseye, I aimed at an air conditioning unit across the street at like a high rise building. It, it, it happened to be like right in the perfect place. So I was aiming at that in all my calculations. That's where it ended up being. So, so you're not only a ex expert bowman, you're a sniper too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd, have, I'd have gone with intuitive scientist who's yeah, calculating no, mentally. Is, no, but that's the that is the, the that's the hallmark of a great sniper. No, is what that you need. you're able to adjust for uh, crosswinds and and distance. No, no, Chuck, we need a poster. We, we need a poster with Matt with the with the target hit, and the and the caption just says, "Do the math." That's all. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, Chuck, I just thought you'd ask the simple question, how many times did you hit the air conditioning unit? No! <laughs> <laughs> That's a Chuck, Chuck. You should have used that was you, I Chuck. I thought that, that was, was you. You dropped uh, that one, Chuck. I did, Chuck. I did. I, so, I, I guess, I how many times did you hit the air conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> he killed well, three people in that apartment building. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, real quick, they never actually found out it was me because I don't leave fingerprints to prove it was oh. me. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Mm. There you yeah. go. See? I told you he was a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, wait, wait, so Matt, I, I'm, I, let me ask another naive question, and forgive me if this sounds sort of ableist, right? So um, do you have an advantage over those who would have lost their arms later in life? You having been born with no arms, so you only ever have known life with no arms. Absolutely, there's an advantage. Uh, it's it's funny because when I first got into archery, they're like, there's no way you can shoot a bow. You have no arms. It's impossible. You have to use your arms to shoot a bow. Well, then I, I started shooting a bow, and then they're like, wow. And you, and like, you, and wait, wait, and you aimed at them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Here, here's how I can't shoot. That's <laughs> right. Wow, that would be a I'm great not, argument. There's no way you can shoot a bow. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. <laughs> Damn, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> the last words on his tombstone. I, I guess right. I was wrong. Um, yeah. But your brain has never known arms, so you're not Correct. fighting a pre-expectation of what you can do. Yeah. So if they tested my brain and they said that the average person's brain, uh, the area of their brain that controls their feet, motor skills, is the size of a pea, and mine's like the size of like a softball. Wow. Um, Ooh, so that's pretty cool. Interesting. I was able to train my brain to do all this extra stuff with my feet. You know, it probably just said, we don't need hands. Let's just throw that chunk of the brain out and we'll use that to store foot stuff, I guess. For those only hearing this, uh, we, I can describe that you're looks like you're sitting in some kind of a garage workshop and there's some badass looking vehicle over uh -huh. your left shoulder. What, what What's going on in that? Is that a, what is a, it? Is that a safe house? Is that a bunker? <laughs> where, like, where are you? Do you know something? <laughs> So when I'm not shooting my bow, I love cars and I love working on cars. I do almost all the work myself. And what's behind me right here is uh, my race car that I just got done building and fixing up. Tell me about some of your science background. Uh, you 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 sound at you you sound sufficiently physics fluent. So that tells me you what? must have had some physics in your portfolio. <laughs> well, to be honest, not not a lot. A lot of it was just kind of like self taught growing up. Uh, that, that works too. That works yeah. too. I, I lived on a farm and I had to a lot of times think of how I was going to do it. Like, for example, I remember I was like eight years old and my dad said I needed to carry this five gallon bucket of feed out to the trough. And I had to figure out how I was going to take a board and put it across from one feed bucket and then stand up underneath it and balance it. And I had to figure out like I was out there with a measuring stick trying to find the middle of the stick. So when I lifted up on it, it wouldn't fall, you know, so there was things like that throughout my whole life that I had to rely on like physics and math to just kind of overcome things really. So Matt, you're yeah. a father of three boys, right? So how do you, how do you do the super dad hero at home while you prepare to go to a Paralympics in Tokyo and race a car? Yeah. You know, what's amazing about my boys is just like, they don't know any different. This is who they right. know. This is their dad. They go along with my craziness, whether I'm shooting my bow, working on cars. Uh, they just support me. In fact, they are one of the biggest motivations in my life on why I push myself to where I'm at, because without them pushing me, I mean, that's honestly how I fell into archery in the first place, because I nobody would hire me and I, and I couldn't figure out how to get a job because people would say you have no arms. And so they wouldn't hire me. So. I found archery to put food on the table for them. So if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't have done this. I would have been trying to figure out something else. So, Wow, man. So when you shoot, what, what are the mechanics behind you shooting? Yeah. Yeah. Take us through what that is. Okay. So how about, um, as I'm explaining it, I can also show you. Oh my gosh. Nice. Oh, oh. Sweet. Would you like to see yeah, how to do sweet. it? Okay. Good. Person? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do it. And, and, uh, because many people will only hear this if you can be a little more explicit. Descriptive. Uh, descriptive. Thank you, Chuck. All right, if you can be right. a little descript more descriptive than you otherwise would be. Okay, so this right here is a release aid that I had made. This is the only modification that I use to shoot my bow. So mm. when you look at a bow or when you're listening or 
in your mind, visualizing a bow, I'm shooting a normal bow that you would buy off the shelf that you would use to shoot with your hands. So like they didn't specifically make this bow for me whatsoever. Cool. And, and that's, and that's legit. There's that it, within the rules. Yep. Everything's within the rules. So, and even, even this thing that's on my shoulder right here is within the rules. So it's a kind of a yoke a, around I, your shoulders. It, I put on a strap that goes underneath my armpits and uh, across my chest, and then I tighten it up. And over my right shoulder, I have a release aid that looks like a trigger of maybe like a gun or something like that. And it has mm -hmm, a long mm -hmm. bar. That bar goes on my chin. So when I'm aiming, I pull with my shoulder that applies pressure to that little trigger, which allows the bow to shoot. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and so <laughs> is, is this, uh, but is it your chin or your teeth that, that engage that? Uh, it's my chin. So I put it in my mouth right. to hook it onto the bow. And you hook it onto the no, bow. And, on. and then it. as you pull back with your shoulder, that causes the bow to come back. But then all you have to do is put your chin down Correct. on the release. And yeah. then the hook pulls up yep. and bang. Bang. So, so this bow that I'm going to use right now is a bow that I'm actually going to use at the games. Um, and it is shooting a little itty bitty skinny arrow and i know you guys are into this stuff but this this arrow weighs 429 grains okay well wow. mm. it shoots out of my bow at 200 miles per hour ow oh my god so literally as i fire the bow when, when you guys see this what by the time this arrow hits the target which is only going to be about three or four feet away from me it's already doing 200 miles per hour Mm. Nice. Okay. So it would be at 200 miles an hour the instant it separates from the string. Yes. And so, because that's the last moment where it's getting any energy that you supplied it. Yeah. And then the correct. rest is just is aerodynamics and gravity at that yes. point. Okay, so it, now you're it does, seated. It does slow down over a period of 310 yards, but you have to calculate that into, you know, how much is it going to slow down? I know when I did that shot, it was about a six second arrow flight. Took okay, so you had to, so you had to shoot wherever that uh, air conditioner was. It was surely high, high to the side of the target because of the crosswinds, but also had to have been above the target because you have for to gravity. allow wow, the, the, the arrow to drop. Yeah, yeah, it was about uh, twenty. I think it was like a twenty-eight or thirty. It might have been a thirty-two degree angle that I was aiming. In the air, so 32 degrees up, but like, like that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so I rest the bow for people who can't see. Uh, I rest the bow against my left leg, and I'm sitting in a, a, a chair. I use my right foot to pick up the arrow and load it onto the bow like that. I then use my right leg and grab the bow, and I pick it up, and I sit gentleman style where I cross my legs, so it kind of brings my right foot up to my chest. At this point, I take my release aid and I bend down to the string and I hook it on. Wow. Like that. And now that it's hooked on, I pick the bow up with my right foot. And uh, so now it's a very weird, awkward yoga position, okay? So at this point, I'm going to take my right foot and push it away from my chest. And now yeah. you're now you're getting that 60 pounds of force. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys can see all that, but that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I aim at the target, bring the trigger up to my jaw. Can you see okay? Yeah. Okay. And then I add pressure until it shoots. Bam. Just like that. Mm. Look at and that. That results in bullseyes and medals. And lots of smiles. <laughs> so you've, wow. you've got to do the. You've got a set number of arrows to release in a set period of time. That's intense. How are you controlling? How are you able to dial yourself down and focus in the middle of competition? Um, so you shoot 72 arrows for qualification and you shoot six arrows at a time and you get four minutes to shoot each six arrow group. And then you go score them, pull them and stuff. But when mm. I do that, I'm so in the zone that when I, like when I draw my bow back, I don't know who's around me. You know, I, I practice the timing. Uh, I do a lot of mental prep, uh, what a good shot feels like. So the distance that we'll shoot in um, Tokyo is 50 meters. 
Right. Oh, that's nothing for you. Damn. (laughs) The bullseye. They should just hand you the medal and then you keep (laughs) up. Hey, you know what? I'll I'll take that. (laughs) Uh, The bullseye is is smaller than a CD. Okay. So a perfect a perfect score is seven hundred and twenty points, and the world record is seven hundred and five. And uh, the last several months or so, I've been shooting to practice about seven oh eight to seven twelve range. Ooh, ooh, wow! Ooh. We're gonna You're be watching there. your ass. Yeah. Oh my god! So getting there. I, I got it. I got this year's been amazing for me as far as mentally. I I just got back from trials and beat the old world record by 12 points or no oh, over, wow. 20, over 20 points is what oh, the, the new oh. so i now own the new world record so oh, that's amazing wow. that's two world records so, nice. so just in just in uh, comparison if you guys want to know so um i average like 700 points at 50 meters okay the number one ranked able-bodied archer um in the world shoots for United States of America. And on the same day on the same field, uh, when they were shooting their scores, they shot a seven Oh four maybe. And I shot 700. So that, I'm only like three or four points off the number one mm. able bodied archer in the world. So mm. as a comparison, Damn. right. Yeah, well, there is no comparison. You make him look like dog food. <laughs> Let's be real here. <laughs> so, Matt, when you when you rock up, do you all of a sudden get a lot of attention because of who you are? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, uh, do the other athletes get a similar sort of attention? And does that kind of blow them out? But for you, you seem to have grown obviously into this attention. And is it? Is it, you know, what well, I've been here before. I'm, I'm not phased by this. Or um, do you see the other athletes getting kind of outside of their comfort zone with the attention? Oh, for sure. You know, uh, what? one thing that's interesting is I've been my whole life used to attention. And what I mean by that is, is it could be negative attention too. Like people making fun of me because I have no arms right. or like I'm well, at a restaurant. A kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, like kid. I'm, yeah. I'm like eating you in a restaurant with my feet and the, everybody in the restaurant staring at me. Right. So my right. whole entire life, I've been able to say, you know what? I don't care what they think. I'm going to do me. None of that bugs me. Like, I don't care. I'm going to block them out. So when it comes to archery and I get into that on the, on the stage of it, it means something and we have thousands of people watching I don't even know that they're there. Whereas let's say for you, let's say, let's say I'm shooting, you know, against Gary or something. He's never been in that situation. No. Right. Yeah, so yeah. you shot really good and now you're shooting for a gold medal, but you've never shot in front of 10,000 people before. So yeah. there is an advantage there for yeah. me, you know, because yeah. I've been dealing with it my whole life and they haven't been. You, you'd make a great stand up comic. You gotta, you gotta have that. You gotta have that same mentality. It's like, I don't care if these people not laughing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, only Chuck has to feel that way. Other comics yeah. are actually oh. laughing at me. No. <laughs> so I'm delighted by how much physics you picked up in your life. And, and as Gary said, a lot of it would have come intuitively to you if you didn't have the formal training. You're thinking about nature and forces and energy the right way. And on this show, we're delighted to learn when athletes throw in some math to, to, to get their medal. And so, Matt, it's been a pleasure to have you on this program. We will all be watching you in Tokyo. And, yeah. and, and good, good luck, but it doesn't even sound like you need it. I'll take all the good luck. I appreciate you guys inviting me onto the show. It's been amazing. I loved all the laughs. Thank you again. Thank all you. right. We got to end it there. Max Stutzman, thanks for being such a good sport on Star Talk. We will all be watching you on the Olympics and beyond. Gary, Chuck, always good to have you. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always, bidding you to keep looking up. <laughs>